Yeah, and and Jeff, you and I are heavy into educating our clients because we want them to be knowledgeable. We think that the more knowledge they consume, the more they can make smarter decisions, thus be profitable in their investment strategies and then grow in their investment uh, portfolio. And obviously, and working alongside investors, that helps um, the journey from both sides in that process. But there's some investors who don't want to really get into the, the, the local knowledge and they start investing as what's called REITs. And REITs are real estate investment trusts. These are funds that you can buy. Typically, your financial advisor will sell them to you. Your financial broker will sell them to you. And they should be compared more to stock markets, to bonds, and other investment vehicles because you don't have a say in which property is being acquired. You simply put money and you're looking at the returns. Um, now, I don't know any real estate investor who doesn't think they can outperform a REIT. One of the reasons why we come, we become into real estate investment is we're very prideful of ourselves. We're very proud of our abilities to learn and yeah, grasp yeah. issues and, and really make smart decisions and be in control. Uh, Jeff, uh, can you talk to us about REITs and your opinions and where it makes sense and where uh, maybe another route may make more sense? I own some. Uh, I think REITs have a place in everybody's portfolio. You shouldn't have 100% of your net worth flipping houses. That's a bad idea. Uh, but the uh, I look underlying the REITs that I own, I'm not going to go into them, like the exact REITs, but I own some REITs because I like what they own. I also, I mean, you're buying into two things, the asset class they invest in and the management team's ability to perform. So, and that's the two things you need to do due diligence on. I would be a little scary of a REIT right now that owns malls and big retail boxes. I would be very, I am very bullish on REITs that own industrial property because in, especially industrial where people can go do things and work is very hot and will be hot forever because ultimately, you know, every contractor in the world needs a shop. It's very hard to paint five houses a week out of your garage. It, you know, it's just real businesses need need quality shop space. Uh, industrial's great. Uh, Self storage. I, there's like a cult of people that keep them in business. That I don't know. I'm cheap. I don't like to have another monthly bill, but I know there's always people at the self storage places. And then you know, I've always wanted to do the auctions of those too, just for the heck of it. But you know, there's some REITs that do amazingly well with self storage, and you know. Self storage is such an interesting concept because back in the day, if you bought a really nice corner whose time wasn't here yet, you threw a self storage facility on it to pay the taxes until that until the time came, till the development hit it. And now it's like a real business, you know. It's uh, almost like a food truck. At one point, a food truck was just something for a restaurant to go out and maybe put at a festival, so that you know more, more people would know the restaurants there. Now the food truck's really making money. It's it's kind of same similar. Uh, scenario but uh i would be leery of reits that own a lot of retail office is a little scary now medical office not so but just pure office is a little scary going forward because you know we're on zoom right now i mean people right. have learned to work from home it's kind of a beautiful thing uh to be able to if if you're disciplined working from home you should get more work done because you're, you know, you don't have to drive to work. It's a little less time, you know, and, and for me, my problem working from home is I'm in the fridge every 10 minutes and we have the leftovers have changed since I looked at them last, but you know, it's uh, zoom and, and a lot of the telecommuting are going to change a lot of parts of commercial real estate. Uh, there is a lot of office space in New York city that I would be a little, uh, a little bearish on right now because yeah. so many people are leaving the city. Uh, they don't, you know, if, if they're only coming to the city one or two days a week for a stand-up meeting, uh, they can live farther out in the suburbs. So, and that's happening too. That's, I guess there's like 15,000 empty apartments on the day we're doing this in New York. That's what's being published. I haven't toured all 15,000 to know that to be a fact. But you, uh, uh, the pandemic is going to significantly change real estate and there's some REITs that are in a wonderful position to do so. Uh, there's a REIT that Publix is forming to just own their own stores. I would invest in that. That would be, I mean, you know, who doesn't, I don't care how bad the economy is, a chicken tender sub is still a viable option for everybody. If it's a Florida and a Georgia thing to know this. But, you know, and, and their special purpose REITs like that, if you can get in something like that, is 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 always a great investment. 
it, it, yeah, I wanna I wanna touch upon one thing you mentioned, which was the uh, Publix uh, chicken tender sub. It's a, such a great value because the turkey slices are so thin that sometimes when you get the chicken tenders, they can't even close it. It's so packed with meat. It's a really good value, and often it's like six or seven bucks. I, I, I highly recommend <laughs> getting that from Publix. But you mentioned a couple of things that I want to um, kind of isolate and, and talk about. Um, one of them is really doing research as to the different variations of REITs. Because one of the things about REITs is that if you give them money, they have to deploy it. They have to spend it. They have to keep putting money somewhere. And so if they're looking at really commercial office space and you keep sending them money, they have to keep deploying that money. <laughs> so a lot of times, so you, you'll see you'll read newspaper or, or different outlets, you'll hear about really, really bad investment deals and you'll figure out who was the one who bought it. Sometimes it's a REIT and they'll, and they'll pay for a residential apartment building, uh, 200,000 per unit. And the logic behind that doesn't make any sense at all. But again, if you keep giving them money, they have to deploy it. They don't, they can't, if you're uh, managing these funds, you can't decide that you're gonna hold on to this cash and wait for, yeah. for a better time to deploy the money. You have to deploy it right away. Um.